This is an example of the MyLabs X2 transponder using direct power. I want to explain how to set it up and what to look for in any troubleshooting. First thing we're going to see is we've got the MyLabs transponder, an X2 transponder, the X2 race key, and the X2 race key mount. We have two wires plugged into here. All of this comes with the direct power setup. You have one wire going to the transponder and one wire going to the power supply. In this case, you can see we have our power supply here. We have brown wire going to hot, blue wire going to ground. The other wire comes around and connects into this transponder. Really all you do once you set this up, the race key mount and the race key should be put someplace where the driver can see this every time he starts his car. The transponder needs to be mounted properly uh, on the car. We're going to take this race key, slide it into the race key mount, snap it in, and this is going to go through a sequence of lights. This is going to tell you whether or not the transponder is working for you. We've already gone through the activation process. The transponder has been activated. We've just now installed it and we're ready for use. So now I'm going to put power to the car. We see our red light blink. Green, blue, yellow, blue, green, pink. And now we go solid green in the middle for two seconds. And then the solid green is going to blink. And we got two blinks and now the race key will go out. At this point, the race key can be removed. The race key is not needed, but you should just leave it in there unless you need to take it out for some reason. If we look at our transponder, we see on top of the M8 connector this solid green light. In most cases, you're not going to be go getting out and looking at your transponder because it's going to be mounted in a place you can't really get to. But this was confirmation. By looking at this green light on top of the race key, this was confirmation that it worked. I'm going to shut power down and we're going to turn it back on again just to go through that sequence of lights. Every time you start power up is when it will go through that sequence of lights. Solid green in the middle, that's what you're looking for. And then a couple blinks and go out. This was confirmation. Now I'm going to give you an example of one that's not working as it should. Let me remove power from the race key. I'm going to put in a race key that I know has an issue. So with this race key, we just slide it, snap it in. Now you go to power the car up, turn power on, the car is dead, or the race key is dead. We've got no power to the race key. Or so it appears, because if we look at our transponder, it looks like we do have power to the transponder. So what is happening here? The race key is not making proper contact. We've got these four contacts on the race key. We've got these four contacts on the race key mount. What I'm going to do to confirm this, I'm going to make a line with a sharpie at the peak of these mounts. Now I'm going to make a line directly across from these four pins and I'm going to slide this race key in only to where the lines match up and then I'm going to stop. That's too far, let me back it out just a bit. So now our lines are lined up so we know we're making good contact. Now let's put power back on. So you see the problem was the race key was not lining up with the race key mount. Now it is. Again, we always want to see that green light at the end and we know that it's good. At this point, again, you could leave the transponder race, you could leave the race key in or you could take the race key out. At this point, since it's not really locked in, it would be a good idea to just snap it in so it doesn't fall out or just remove it all together. If you remove it all together, you still have your green light. And that would be the troubleshooting for the X2 direct power when your race key and your race key mount is not making contact.